We all know the Patriots have the third pick in this April's draft. Could it be Jaden Daniels heading to Foxborough or is a surprise on the way? ESPN.com put up their quarterback plans for the teams at the top of the draft today. They have the Patriots indeed drafting Daniels third overall and also signing Jacoby Brissett to a two-year $15 million deal, half of it guaranteed. He'd likely be serving as the bridge quarterback until Daniels is ready. Let's roll, presented by Town Fair Tire. How do you feel about that plan, Andrew Callahan? So I say this as someone who's only seen Jaden Daniels, I don't know, two or three times once mm-hmm. with a beer in my hand on a Saturday. I have not watched any of his tape, definitely not the All-22. But hell yes, I love this plan. Give me the bridge, a guy who everyone glows about, and Jacoby Brissett. Jaden Daniels is dynamic dual-threat quarterback the Patriots have not had since what? Like Flutie when he hung out in 05? Like this is the guy who can advance you as far as what I know on the surface. But we got a long way to go till the draft, no? You like the backup, though. But we have yes. a, and the backup we, plan, too. We have a daily talk show, so we've got to. No, I understand. I'm not knocking the topic. I'm just saying, look, from what I know, this is perfect. This is excellent. Like, you stay at three, get a guy who seemingly has franchise potential. Every draft list of the top ten NFL Network, ESPN, PFF, mm. Daniels is in the top ten. This is not a media, you know, narrative or creation. The guy is legit. He set record-setting numbers at LSU. And Jacoby Brissett, I mean, there are two reasons the guy's bounced around the league for a while. Everyone respects him. He's a hardworking guy, and he's not good enough to be a starter. But for one year as a mentor, absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I think the, the one thing is, whether it's Jaden Daniels or Drake May or you move up and take Caleb uh, Williams, whatever it is, the, the, quarter, uh, the, the Patriots have to learn from their mistakes with Mac Jones. If you're going to draft a quarterback, you can't just say we're drafting a quarterback and next we draft a tackle and draft a wide receiver. No, drafting a quarterback has to be an organizational decision and you've got to go all out. You've got to draft a quarterback. You've got to have an offensive coordinator who believes in them. You've got to get that guy a quarterback coach. You have to build the team as if you really think that every, every move you make has to correspond and has to reinforce the quarterback. And the Patriots didn't do that with Mac Jones. They drafted a quarterback and said, okay, here, plug and play. This is not a plug and play position. And the guys who have thrived, these young players who have developed, they've developed because the organizations have gone all in. So if you're going to do this with Jaden Daniels, it's not just Jaden Daniels. It's your whole organization has to change its philosophy. How do we feel about the whole organization and how they're plotting along this offseason as it relates to that thing? Because I think that's where they are. I would have felt so much better. In other words, I'll just tell you. If they (laughs) they hired a young offensive guy as their head coach, okay, as their head coach, and everything sort of flows through that. If he has success, there's no threat of him leaving. You re-sign him, and he's your guy. And now everything flows through that offensive head coach, his system. He's in charge of the quarterback. They're joined at the hip, and that's the. It just flows down. The whole organization flows down from there. And I don't think the Patriots are in that place. They don't even know what their system is. They don't know who the coordinator is. They don't know who the quarterbacks coach is. They don't know how they're going to play football. So I don't feel good about their approach with this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, what you just pitched is a good plan. Just ask the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, the Rams and Sean McVay. They're losing assistants, not head coaches, because those guys are in place. But I would say it would be even worse if you opened up a search and they suffered from, from the head coaching position, what they're dealing with now with the OC. Like, imagine if you go talk to Zach Robinson or Shane Waldron, the equivalent of these head coaches, and all of them look and go, you don't have a quarterback, your receiving talent stinks, Your offensive line is the worst in the league with two guys going to free agency? No thanks. Like, that's a much bigger hold to be in with no head coach than no offensive coordinator because they're struggling, I think, now to find the exact guy they want. And at least, though, they've got the guy at the top in place. It's a candidate problem, though. I've I've come to – I've arrived at at this decision. It's a candidate problem. It's not the Patriots' problem? The 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 Patriots are solid. It's everybody else. No, the Patriots are not solid because look where they are. They won four games. They got the third pick in the draft, and they have uh, mediocre talent. So they've got their problem. But, Mike, imagine, imagine if somebody came to you, cause, which actually happened. Okay, I'm going to make it about your life. Somebody came to you in an expansion situation and said, we got this new thing we're going to start. Do you want to be a part of it? You can make your name. And, and, and maybe there's somebody else out there. Maybe there's a, a, a legacy media, a radio <laughs> legacy program out there that's in front of you right now. But if you do it the right way, if you believe in yourself, you can get to the top. What if they're paying oh me? Oh my God! What if uh, they're paying me like crap? Okay, now that might be a problem. But I'm just telling you, if I'm looking at, if I'm an offensive guy, I got the third pick in the draft, and they're going to draft a quarterback, and I get to put my imprint on it. 
Yeah, give me the challenge. What's wrong with these guys? Like, oh, you know, I don't know about that. Of course it's uncertain. They suck, yes. But if you believe in your ability and your vision, if you have a vision, you take that well, job. Well, they got turned down by guys who had better jobs with the same thing. But some of them. Some of them have Zach better Robinson jobs. Zach Robinson gets to do this in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Waldron and, gets to do it in Chicago. Well, I don't know if Chicago – it's a similar situation. You know, you got a coach. You got a coach. Yeah, in the hot and he seat, chose. You got a rookie. Yeah, but you got but much better weapons, a better he, offensive line. He chose line. Chicago over you. Why is that his problem? But, but I, no, see, I'm not talking about Waldron. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about some of these other guys who are who. You know, Nick Cayley, what, what, what are you going? You're going back to be a tight ends coach? What? So you want to be a tight ends coach, or you want to be an awesome? Oh, you want to be the man? So some of the guys that they're talking to, some of them, not all of them, but some of them they're talking to. If you're, if you're afraid of the job, then I've talked to the wrong guy. Okay, there's a lot of people who want He's to take scared of. receiver at three, get that quarterback mm. later. How's that worked out for teams picking in the top five? Okay, here's playoff games with drafted uh, player in the top five at receiver. And, you know, we're going all the way back uh, to Corey, uh, Corey Davis. But uh, So those are the top five receivers. Then you look at the playoff wins in the right-hand column, and it's just – it's very rare – that that number one receiver makes a difference. Well, I say number one receiver, the guy's drafted up there. That so, high, yeah. You know, there's been a lot of failures at quarterback at that spot. Can you say thing, same thing about receiver? Yeah, of course. But I think those teams are in the top five because they also didn't have quarterbacks. And you just mean, no, if you're a receiver, you're relying on that guy to get you the ball. So if you're stuck with a bad quarterback or you're with a bad offensive coordinator or you're just not good in some of those players' cases, yeah, you're going to swing and miss. I would look at this, though, because we're, we're talking about this because of Marvin Harrison Jr., who uh, supposedly should just be fitted for a gold jacket already. Like, he seems legit, as legit as any receivers come by. Do you take him at three or go with the quarterback? And I, I can't go this far with Marvin Harrison Jr. because here's something else I've learned this week. When you look at the NFL Network, ESPN, PFF, at least 10 of their top 50 players in this year's class are all wide receivers. So take Harrison out of it. That's still 20% of the best players in this class play his position. Get the quarterback first, then get a receiver. Trade up if you need to get him. They're all waiting for you. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, so, uh, I wouldn't be so afraid of that chart if I, had a, if I had a quarterback. If I had a quarterback and I had a number three pick, I'd take Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay, well, and, and, but – they don't have a quarterback. Let you got to take a quarterback. Let me throw one at you. You draft Marvin Harrison at three, and you take your second-round pick and trade for Justin Fields. How do you feel about that? Because there's, you know, there's a real possibility the Bears draft Caleb Williams, move on from Justin Fields. Justin Fields is a quarterback in his fourth year who we're still having questions as to whether or not he's a good passer. And those guys, to me, have already answered the question. He's not good enough. Like, he's dynamic as hell. I think you could definitely complain about the offensive line, the system that he's been in. But his old offensive coordinator might be among the top front runners for the Patriots job right now. Yeah, he's not scared. I, I, I don't think Ugh. that guy's going to get it done. And right. I don't think Justin Fields is a guy that you look and go, here's our franchise quarterback. See, the guys you want are scared. And the guys you don't want aren't scared. Like Luke Getze is, was uh, Justin Fields' uh, offensive coordinator. So imagine, in, in your scenario, you get Marvin Harrison, you get Justin Fields, and you get Luke Getze. No! <laughs> no! That doesn't work. Absolutely not. Don't play games at this position. At number three, draft a quarterback. You need one of the top quarterbacks. Don't draft down. Don't play games. Don't get Justin Fields. Draft a quarterback.